Hello and welcome to Nikolai's Genetics Lessons and today we are going to talk about life history as an alternation of generation. What does it mean? That means, for example, if we take some plants, they can exist in haploid state and in diploid state. And we call this alternation of generations. Sometimes haploid and diploid entities would look differently. Sometimes we cannot tell the difference between them. Such alternation of generations between haploid and diploid we call sporic meiosis. So let's start with zygote. So what is a zygote? Zygote is when two gametes would fuse and we get zygote which is always diploid. So we start with diploid zygote and by the process of mitosis zygote would develop into diploid entity. This part we can compare with humans. Also male and female gamete would fuse making zygote which would uh, through the mitosis develop into the fetus and then into the adult organism. But then analogy is not going to work analogy with uh, humans because humans would produce two type of the gametes and we will go straight to this point. But in sporic meiosis, what going to happen? Sporophyte, so let me put also two and here. So this adult organism is going to be deployed. And uh, through the process of meiosis, it's going to produce not gametes, but spores. And as you know, meiosis always reduce number of chromosomes. So instead of deployed organism, spores are going to be 1n, so would be haploid. Now one more question, why diploid organism through the process of meiosis produce spores and not the gametes? Because gametes need to fuse to form zygote, but spores through the process of mitosis would develop into haploid entity, into haploid organism. If we use animals or Humans as analogy, imagine that sperm instead of fusing with egg cell would start process mitosis and start dividing and would end up being fetus and then adult organism. This is exactly what happens here. Because spores are a result of the meiosis of the diploid organism, all spores are going to be genetically different and they would grow into the genetically different haploid entities, haploid organisms. So also let's put one and here. Now these fully grown plants cannot go meiosis like we see here because they're haploid. They only have one set of chromosomes. So they cannot go any type of recombination. So through the process of mitosis, they produce gametes, which basically clones, uh, unicellular clones of this haploid organism. So as you see, gametes are also haploid. And different gametes, which are genetically different, would fuse into zygote, which is diploid. So this diploid organisms we call sporophytes. And the stage of the life cycle, all these haploid organisms we call gametophytes. I know that for many students it is the most difficult part to memorize that this stage is sporophyte because uh, we just all get used to that uh, diploid organism produce gametes. So it's have to be gametophyte. But here is um, different logic. Take a look. These sporophytes are called sporophytes because they produce spores. And this stage is called gametophyte because they produce gametes. So if you want to memorize which are sporophytes and which are gametophytes, just ask yourself question what this entity would produce. If deployed entity would produce spores, then it is sporophyte. If entity produce gametes, it is gametophyte. A lot of confusion here again because we get used that gametes are produced by diploid organisms. But here 
gametes are produced by haploid organisms, but not through the process of meiosis, but through the process of mitosis. It is very important, so I will repeat again. Sporophytes, through the process of meiosis, produce spores, which will grow into haploid gametophytes, which, through the process of mitosis, would produce gametes, which then would join to produce diploid zygote. Don't be scared, this is the same picture as in the previous slide, but has a little bit more details in it. And here we take as example Ulva, this is green alga. Take a look at this picture. We cannot tell by the appearance whether it is diploid organism or haploid organism, whether it is sporophyte or whether it is gametophyte. As I said earlier, sometimes sporophytes and gametophytes looks differently, but sometimes we cannot tell the difference. Now let's go over this life cycle again. So we start with zygote and zygote always is deployed. So 2N and zygote through the process, uh, which is deployed through the process of mitosis start growing into the adult organism. But here at the stage of the four cells, we call it germling and the cell would produce hold fast. So it's kind of root in uh, seaweeds. And here we see deployed adult organism. So also let's put two and here and two and here. Now deployed organism through the process of meiosis with genetic recombination would produce spores. We do not call them gametes because this spores is not going to fuse. They will grow into the adults. The spores are haploid and these germlings would grow into the adults which are going to be haploid. So let's also put that all these organisms are haploid. So one and here, one and here, one and here, and one and here. And these adults are also haploid one and. These haploid adults would produce gametes, but not through the process of meiosis because they are haploid. They cannot just recombine their chromosomes. So through the process of mitosis, they're going to produce gametes. And in this case of uh, ulva, gametes are going to be isogametes, meaning that both male and female uh, gametes are going to be of the same uh, appearance. So if they appear the same, we call them isogametes. These gametes, of course, also haploid. And when two gametes genetically, which are different, would find each other, they fuse with their flagella. So each gamut here has uh, two flagella. And now we have a single entity with four flagella and they fuse into one and then would lose this flagella. So they would have four and then they are going to lose this flagella and we have a deployed zygote. As you remember, this part of life cycle, plant would be sporophyte, would be deployed. And the rest is going to be haploid. And we call this alternation of generations. Deployed adult organism, which we call sporophyte, through the process of meiosis would produce haploid spores. And these haploid spores would grow into also haploid adults which through the process of mitosis would produce haploid gametes and those gametes would join in order to produce diploid zygote. I hope you have found this explanation simple, but because there are many different modes of sexual reproduction in plants, I'm going to make more videos with true false questions and also with multiple choice questions so you would be able to check your knowledge. And this is all for today. Subscribe and see you in the next video. Goodbye.